so previously we discovered this planet, we landed on it, we sampled the population and um, we found out some information about them and we, our research question was and still is what are the characteristics of this population, what characterises it um, are there certain attributes that that population has uh, that help us to know anything about them and so we're starting to do some exploratory uh, research so what we did previously actually we found I think we had more questions than we had answers well we made some measurements of height we didn't know if our sample was representative we didn't know um, if the sample size was big enough we didn't know if that was the entire population um, we really didn't know anything and um, we need to write that down we need to say that state that explicitly these are all the things we don't know but that was a useful pilot study firstly we discovered that there are at least inhabitants there and we got some and, and their measurements for example the ages that they reported and the uh, heights and weights perhaps um, qualitatively at least don't seem that dissimilar from people from Earth so they seem to have some characteristics that bear resemblance to our own that's not a conclusion as such although it might conclude that piece of research that forms part of our discussion and should inform our future research so we've now actually got some useful pointers but now what we want to know is how we can take this forward. We think they're a bit like us. What do we do next? Okay, so. Um, for example, how can we... Uh, so we've got some, some descriptive statistics. We can find out things like the mean height, the mean weight. We can find the spread in the data by looking at things like the standard deviation. So that tells us something about how height varies amongst that, um, that sample but we can do more so for example let's just um, say well we started with 10 I'm afraid this is males here it was uh, ignore the fact then that it says males this is just the height of people or inhabitants from Tatooine so we got say n equals 10 and you get this rather lumpy looking distribution with sort of one or two, maybe three in each, uh, each bin. So these are just called bins. When I talk about a bin, it's like a range. Um, if we increased our sample size and maybe did a bit of random randomization, um, we can improve the look of that uh, distribution. And you know, it still looks a bit lumpy. Uh, uh, but let's just have a, a few more people into that our sample. N equals 50, and so on. You can keep increasing the size. 1,000, oh, 500,000, 2,500. And eventually, what tends to happen, especially in physical measurements, so physical measurement, I'm measuring something real like height um, they tend there you go towards what's called the normal distribution and it's normal it's a natural distribution it tends to exist naturally in nature um, a guy called Carl Gauss is it Carl Gauss um, discovered it and came up with a nice formula for it that turns out in mathematics to be incredibly useful for so many things um, so this distribution is just pervasive in all of mathematics, um, all of the quantitative sciences, this uh, distribution exists because it characterises so many natural phenomena and is really easy mathematically to work with. Of course, we don't care about the maths so much today, um, but that's why you'll find it there. So people might talk about a Gaussian, a normal curve, uh, normally distributed, natural data. They're talking about this. And so that's just telling me 
how my data is distributed. Yeah, so, um, for example, I, I know that I've got more values in this middle section, and I've got less values that sit out here. We call those the tails. And so it just tells us something about our data. And the more samples you get, um, the more you tend to uh, uh, approach this, this curve. Because that's just qualitative. The, the nice thing about the normal curve is it has some well-defined characteristics that underpin um, a lot of what we do. And even if, in fact, even if data isn't truly normal, um, often you can get away with using the assumption of normality and, and, and very frequently the assumption of normality in the data um, ten or in the analysis is there. It's very frequently used, um, so much so that you, it's glossed over. But actually it tends to be quite valid and you can do a lot of... Um, uh, statisticians are, are, are really interesting, well not really interesting people, they're quite dull people, but what they um, will do is they'll make a bunch of assumptions come up with a bunch of tests that then give you some results. Then you go into the real world, you do some real science, uh, you do some real research, get some real results, and most of the time they'll break half of the assumptions that um, the mathematician made um, on their piece of paper. And so we have to balance between actually what's practical and useful in analysing our research results and what Mr. Mathematician told us we can and can't do because quite often we break assumptions. The most important thing to do is write down what those assumptions are and how they limit our analysis. But I will talk about that probably uh, throughout the, the course. So the first thing to note is under that curve, that curve contains 100% of, of data, in theory. So if that curve is an estimate of the population, we're estimating that everyone fits within that normal curve. So the area, when I talk about the area under the curve, I'm talking about all of that area underneath the curve, right out to forever that way and forever that way. Represents all data. And so the probability that I will um, pick a value that's covered by that curve. So pick a value, uh, uh, say in height here. So the probability that I will find someone with a height, <coughs> well we know heights can't, <coughs> pardon me, heights can't be negative, so we know that the probability that height between zero and some very, very big number that's infinitely large, the probability that someone will have a height is exactly one. So even if that height is zero, there is a probability that someone will have uh, exactly one that someone has a height. Okay? That's so the, the basic idea of probability. So 100% of the data of all measurements fit under that curve. Ah, now this is a confusing diagram. Um, not best suited to a PowerPoint point slide, I'd suggest. So, let's say if 100% of the data fits under the curve, well, under that segment of the curve, so I'm talking about between zero and that point there, then I have, let's say in this case, 16% of the data. So if I were to measure everyone ev that ever existed, perhaps, well, it makes it more complicated, everyone in the population, let's stick with that. If I measured everyone in the population, I measured their height, I'm saying that 16% of them would have a height within that range there. Okay? And I can plot this cumulatively. So that means I'm just adding them up progressively. So if I take that 16% and I say, well, it's a, in that range there. Is that coming up as I speak? Um, I don't think the latency is too bad. Right, the, um, and I look down here and then I were to plot so there you go, I could write 16%, that's 16 there. Now if I were then to move on a little bit more, 
and then add up everyone in there that bit plus everyone in that bit then I'd say okay well that's a bit more than 16 percent I know 30 so. so now 30 percent of the data exists between in that range there and so you can co so keep doing this until you've added up everything under this curve and so you add it all up like that and you get to 100% of the data clear as mud but the idea of the cumulative distribution is quite important when we are trying to understand what these basic statistics mean um, things like the standard deviation said Qualitatively, it tells us something about the spread of our data. If the data is normally distributed, or if we're assuming that it's normally distributed, that assumption means something quantitatively is the standard deviation. It means that one standard deviation from the mean, each side of the mean, so we've got a mean height here, which is, I don't know what it is, 100 and say 175 centimetres, so we've calculated the mean, added up all the values, divided by the number of values. And then we've calculated the standard deviation. We're saying that within that range there, one standard deviation, either side of the mean, we will see 68% of people, okay, of the heights of people. That is only true for normal data. But very often we make that assumption of normality. So, standard deviation is a useful measure. Oh, we're losing the microphone. We, um, where was I? So, standard deviation is a still a useful measure, even if you can't assume normal data, because it still tells you something about the spread. Okay, but quantitatively it only means something under the normal curve. So it only means 60% of the data under the um, bits between one standard deviation, plus and minus one standard deviation of the mean in a normal, normally distributed data. But it doesn't render it meaningless outside of normal data, you just can't interpret it with this 68%. So we go out to three standard deviations uh, and we have 99.7% of the data included uh, within, within that range, okay? And you see most of the curve is highlighted.